Just another brother with another humble question. Just another brother with another humble question. Uh. Welcome to another episode of A Brother With Questions. I am your host, B. Period. Man, I appreciate you for joining me. Before we get started, let me not forget to ask you to like and subscribe to the channel. Like, subscribe, share, and then comment. I know, I feel like I, I didn't put you to work. I don't know how much I'm supposed to pay you, but please like, subscribe, like, subscribe, and share and comment. Uh, to the podcast, so I appreciate it, man. That's the only way we grow. Man, tonight's episode is, uh, I'm calling it dedicating tonight's episode to two things that that uh, that I love, that I like, uh, that I like to do. Um, and so the first topic that we're going to dive into is going to be my man, Joe Rogan. Uh, I don't care what they say out there. This is my top podcast. Um, and, uh, until somebody knocks him off the, uh, the pedestal, if you will, this is my top podcast. Uh, but on here, in this particular episode, he's talking to Terrence Howard. That's right. Actor Terrence Howard. I'm not gonna, not gonna go all the way in on this because they actually talk for three hours. And so, uh, I cannot react to three hours worth of content. That would be crazy. I think. <laughs> but uh but we're gonna just take a, a quick listen to the beginning of this podcast and then and then I'll share some thoughts after that. How did you get started with all this? I didn't come into this world the way everybody else does, I don't think. I used to think that everybody had the similar experience, but like, if I asked you, what was your first memory in life? What would it be? I don't think I know. My first memory was almost like when you're dreaming and you're falling and you hit the bottom and you wake up. Mm -hmm. That was my first memory, but I didn't wake up here. I was inside my mother's womb. And I was about maybe six months inside the womb. And I'm like, okay, don't forget, I'm here. Okay, okay. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. You go to sleep. Wake up again. Now something's moving in front of you. And you're like, oh, that's my friend. But I had a different name for it. I didn't know it was my hand. But I knew I had a title for it. Go back to sleep, all of those things. Then ultimately you get ready to come out. I remember all of that. Getting, you remember coming out? Remember being compressed, you know, and there's, you want to panic, but there's, you're flooded with like some serotonin and dopamine to where you feel relaxed. You go right back to sleep. You remember being born. I remember being circumcised. I remember. So that's all we're going to watch. Because again, this is three hours long. I'm not going to do that to myself or you, audience. But this is pretty much how the interview went. Um, Terrence Howard, for three hours, talked to Joe Rogan. And they may have spent six minutes talking about acting or television. They, they spent three hours, though, pontificating. Really, Joe listening. Um, because as, as some of the comments said, this interview for Joe Rogan was kind of like the Cat Williams interview for Shannon Sharp, where literally Terrence was speaking sometimes 20, 30 minutes without interruption about a particular topic. And, and Joe was just kind of left stunned and like, what do I say? <laughs> what do I say to this comment right now? But but what he did, and, and the reason why I wanted to speak on this real quick, is because after watching all three hours, um, there's two things that I've come across with. Number one, um, three hours is not enough to dissect what Terrence Howard said in this interview. That's number one. Um, and then number two, about Terrence Howard, there's either... One or two things are true here. 
Terrence Howard is either a genius or he's out of his mind. <laughs> because they literally spent, or he literally spent three hours explaining his scientific theories that he has about the world. And, and like his, his initial story about his first memory being in the womb, uh, which, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm kind of like Joe. I'm, I'm trying to think what my first memory was, and then I don't have an answer for you. And so I don't know how y'all feel about that and how y'all feel about that in the audience. But um, I think even if I had one, it wouldn't have been the womb. <laughs> I, I think I even talked to my brother. I, I'm sure he could give me one, but it wouldn't be the womb. And so uh, as he pontificated, like I said, about three hours about his physics theories, his different scientific theories, and, and, and the, the, what was wild about it is the theories that he's talking about are left of center. Meaning he's got theories that count, that contradict the prevailing theories of science today. So that's how deep he went into his theories. Now, according to him, he's wrote a book about it. Um, he's done the research necessary to prove that his theories are true. Um, and, and according to him, he's been trying to debate uh, scientists or at least have a conversation with scientists by allowing him to present his theory, allowing him to present his, his research, his arguments, his supporting evidence, but no one wants to take him seriously. Um, so, so the interview itself was just, as I said, eye-opening that this guy, who we know to be a great actor, also has what he argues are some of the most uh, radical theories about society as we know it today. I mean, he even states in the interview that if we don't adopt his theories, that the world is headed for destruction. But if we do adopt his theories, that we'll change the way we think about the world today. Which is just crazy. Um, what, but what I did want to say before I move on from this is I think it's interesting that here's a guy who spent three hours and we're not talking about it. Like I said, he's either a genius or a crazy person. But the idea that a man who, for all intents and purposes, is known for his acting, has almost a hundred patents on different theories that he's put together, which in order to get a patent, there has to be research. There has to be research to show that you are the original creator of something. He's done that. He's even shown one particular pattern, patent that he had in labs that was um, the basis for a lot of VR that we see today. So I'm not saying he's a genius. I'm not saying he, he, everything he said is true. I'm just saying, why aren't we talking about this? We spent five, six, seven days talking about Diddy and, and rightfully so, because what he did was horrible and, and he should be called to the carpet for it. But we spent six, seven days on this. And I don't know anybody who's talking about the fact that Terrence Howard spent three hours with Joe Rogan breaking down his scientific theories. Like, just, just to hear that. The man broke, took three hours to break down scientific theories with evidence and research to back it up. And everybody's ignoring him. We've got to do a better job. To me, we, we talk about all kind of foolishness. Why can't we get this man a spotlight to either highlight his ignorance? If that's what we think it is, a highlight is intelligence. One way or another, he should be talking to somebody on a platform 
Why is it that he can only go to this platform? And that's a failure on our part, in my opinion. And, and that's my thought on Terrence Howard, man. Um, again, I'm not asking you to agree with everything he said, because as I said, you need more than three hours to dissect what he had to say. But I just think it's interesting that he's taken the time to do the research to come up with theories that actually counteract what's already being done and just the possibility that there could be truth in it. In and of itself is just amazing. But all we want to do is talk about Diddy. Talk about the fact that in the congressional they were arguing uh, with each other back and forth and then they called Marjorie Taylor Greene um, bad butch body or something to that nature. We got to do better, man. There's so much more happening in the world that we could be discussing. Last thing, last thing I'm going to do on my uh, today's video. I told you today's video is about talking about things that I love. And so here in my second video that we're going to react to today, I got a video about Bishop Patrick Wu. Anybody that know, you may not know who he is, but he is a very outspoken um, bishop that is not afraid to talk about what's happening in the world and give his biblical perspective about it. And it doesn't matter what it is, he's speaking on it. And so in this particular video, they're talking about the idea that um not the idea that at church um it was in sometime in may police were called in the middle of his sermon and let, let me show you why you need to get your ties you need to get your ties i've i got enough rainbow ties like to wear one every sunday in june and i pro I, i'm talking about a different one and i i probably do it every sunday I'm not giving them God's rainbow. Amen. Somebody called the police on me last Sunday. And they came here during the service. Someone, they may have been in here. Ushers, pay attention. No one is supposed to be on your cell phone recording uh, during service. And you all, you all, if, if you see somebody doing just go politely tell them to turn the phone off. But somebody called the police. They might have called them. I'm trying to figure out what part of the sermon could they have possibly called them on me on this time. What did I say? It was on the 8 o'clock service, and I was saying that everyone is welcome to come to church. And I mean that. But it's... It, 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 if a man comes dressed like a woman, that he can't regularly attend service like that coming here. So, well, uh, don't you want him to come and hear the word? Yeah. So he says, from what the conversations that they had with the police, it would seem there potentially was someone who was in attendance that called because he was preaching against a man coming to church dressed as a woman. I do, but he knows he's coming to church and he knows he's a he. And he'll come in here uh, dressed like that. Now the question is, for some of you softest, is why? Because we have children in the church. We have children sitting up there in the children's section. We have young people and I don't want them to get confused watching a man sitting there with his ugly legs and his big hands and his big feet and his Adam's apple and uh, sitting there talking about, amen! And, but dressed like a woman, I don't want children to get confused when they come to, of all places, church. And I know through studying their literature, the way they count things like that, 
the way they consider that a victory is if they're allowed to come and no one says anything and no one asks them to leave. If they're just allowed to come and sit through the service, looking like that, desecrate the whole church, they count that a victory. Because what, what's going to happen the next Sunday? We have about 10 of them. Then the next Sunday, 20. Oh, no. So I, that, that must have been what I was talking about. And next thing you know, they called the police and saying I was uh, spreading hate and that I was trampling on the First Amendment, which I was exercising my own constitutional rights, freedom of religion, freedom of, of speech, and uh, my First uh, uh, First Amendment rights. And, uh, and so they came. <laughs> so they came. Obviously, um, they did not arrest him. They apparently, uh, just to kind of wrap this up, they came, they apparently called the phone that reported the information and nobody responded. Um, and so ultimately it was seen that they left. But here's what, I, here's my thought on this real quick. Let's go ahead and stop sharing this video. Here's my thought on this real quick. Uh, I've been in a service where someone, uh, a man has come into the service. Um, dressed as a woman and two things uh, the Bible does say come as you are but I believe you know that when you come like that especially when as he says when it's obvious this is a man dressed as a woman um you're you're causing a distraction because you're bringing unwanted attention to yourself. But on top of that, I also believe that you're coming out of order um, because you're not coming who as as you are. And and what I mean by that is, and this is probably going to get me in trouble, but what I mean by that is, you're not coming as the person that you are you're coming as the person you're trying to make me see you at but when 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 i think about that god sees you for who you are so god doesn't see you as this person that you say you are god sees you for who you are who he made you to be and so you're, you're bringing unwanted attention. You're disturbing someone else. Because let's be honest, the church is full of everything that, that the world is full of. And, and so when you come in, just like the world is judging you from time to time, so they are in the church. And you may say, well, they're not supposed to do that. I can, I mean, I'll agree with you on that, but that's the truth. And so don't come to be a distraction. Come to find out who he is. Because here's the belief that most Christians believe. I can't put you in hell, and I'm not going to try. All I'm going to do is love on you and teach you or teach or speak according to what the Bible says. From there, I'm going to encourage you to develop your own relationship with God. And, and it's going to be up to God, the Holy Spirit, to convict you to the truth that, to the truth, let's just say that, to the truth. Not my truth, not your truth, but the truth according to the Bible. Now, it's my belief that if you do that, the Bible is going to convict you against it. That's my belief. But my, my goal is to convince you that God loves you enough in spite of whatever you are today or whatever you say you are that he'll meet you there 
And my belief is if you develop that relationship with him, not on a Sunday and a Wednesday or a Sunday and a Tuesday, but seven days a week, you're in that word, you're reading, you're praying sincerely. You take him into your life. That he'll do the convicting that needs to be done to get you where you need to be. But in the meantime, don't be a distraction. And I say that sincerely, regardless of what the sin is. You don't come to the service and hit your vape pen in the middle of the service because you understand that's a distraction. I get that you smoke weed, but you don't fire up your blunt in the middle of the service. I get that you drink alcohol, but you're not putting out the flask in the middle of the service. In the middle of the service, the goal should be uh, identifying with God for what God is trying to do on that day. Anything that brings distraction from that should be left out. No different than sometimes when the baby's too loud and you can't calm the baby down. What do you do? You take the baby out to church. Because now you're taking away from the spirit and what the spirit is trying to do on that day. And not even even for the for the neighbors that are around you. That's for you. Because as you sit there knowing or assuming that everybody's staring at you because you know you're a man dressed as a woman and you look like it. Now you distracted too. Because you are so focused on what you think everybody else is saying. You know who you can't hear now? God. You're so distracted, you don't hear what God is trying to say to you on that day. And so, for, for a myriad of reasons, I agree. And this is not hate. This is not, this is love so that we can all connect to the thing that, that we came to church for that day. God. And whatever my sins are, I guarantee you I won't be doing them on, on service either. Because I'm not trying to distract from what God is trying to do in the service. I want God to be able to flow freely through everybody. So I'm going to minimize any distractions so that everybody can hear God at the level that he needs them to hear. And you may disagree with that, and I'm okay with that. But you got to remember, when you come to that service, it ain't about you. And what I mean by that, if we all take me out, it's about connecting with God. It's about being in a room with a bunch of people who are connecting with God and the power of the Holy Spirit that can be brought when two or three gather in my name. Anything that takes away from that focus is a distraction nobody needs. And on that note, I'm B period and I'm out. Yeah. Yeah.